Okay, this is just a continuation of the last video on method of elimination. I'm just going to give you one additional problem to show you another type of um, system of equations you might be provided that will make you do an extra step first before you can add or subtract the two linear equations and eliminate a variable. Um, <clears throat> what we see here in this particular system of equations being provided is we see <clears throat> that the equations are not readily written in a way, or they're not written in a way where they can be readily subtracted or added so that you can eliminate a variable. If I were to add these two equations, I would still have both the variables. I would have, um, I should show you this with a different pen, what I would end up with is 7x plus x is 8x, 15 plus a negative 3 would get me plus 12y, and over here I get 52. I didn't eliminate a variable, so this method won't help me if I just do use this method the way the, um, the equations are written right now. But there's something I can do to manipulate one or both equations just so that I can add or subtract them to then eliminate a variable. Um, we should know by now that I can multiply a number on both sides of an equation, and I will have an equivalent equation. The numbers will look different, but it's still equivalent because all I did was just multiply both sides by a number. I can also do the same by dividing both sides by a number. Um, so I'll show you the, all the different choices I have. I have a whole variety of things that I can do um, so that I can add these two equations together or subtract them to eliminate a variable. One thing I can do if I wanted to, I can multiply the bottom equation by negative 7 on both sides. If I did that, my new system of equations, which is actually not new, but my equivalent system of equations, would be negative 7x plus 21y equals negative 140. So what I've done now is I've rewritten the, the second equation in a way where I have a negative 7 as my uh, number being multiplied to x. It's my coefficient for x. And when I do that, when I add these two equations together, what I would end up with is 7. I'm going to add these two. 7 plus a negative 7, that gets me 0. And then 15 plus 21, that gets me 36y and then and so on and I can see I've already eliminated the x variable and so that could work but that's not the only way I have to go about it maybe I don't want to work with sevens maybe I want to work with this one x and I want to divide the top equation by seven let's see if I did that I would basically be dividing this entire side by seven and then divide that by seven and my equivalent equation would be over here is x <coughs> plus 15 sevenths y equals 32. And then the equation here is x is still the same. I didn't do anything to this one. Equals 20. And then here I would have to subtract these two. And if I did, this would eliminate the x variable. I would have 0x because 1 minus 1 is 0. And then over here I start having to work with some numbers I don't know if I really want to work with. Oops, I didn't write divided by 7 over here. So I would have 15 sevenths minus a negative 3. That looks kind of ugly. And over here I can see when I have 32 sevenths minus a 20. That looks ugly. So I'm, you know, I can solve it this way. If I want to, I can do that. But just because I'm afraid I might make some number crunching mistakes, I'm not even going to go with this method. Okay, but I do want to show you how you can, there's just, there's always choices. You can, whatever numbers are friendly for you, those are the numbers you should choose to work with. Okay, um, so another option is, what if I decide to um, divide this whole side by 3, so that instead of eliminating the x variable, instead I'm going to change this number so I can eliminate the y variable. So I'll show you what that means. I can divide the whole side by 3 and divide this side by 3. And my new equation would be 7 thirds x plus 5y equals 32 thirds. Ooh, that's looking ugly already. But I want to show you how it can 
<laughs> I did the wrong number. This should have been 5, and this should be 5. Divide both sides by 5, and if I do that, I will end up with a 5 here. This will end up being a 1, because 5 divided by 5 is 1, and this is a 5 here. Sorry for that mistake. Um, so then here, and then when I rewrite this equation over here, I'll end up with x. Wow, making lots of mistakes. 15 divided by 5 is 3. That should be a 3. I will end up with x minus 3y, which equals 20. Um, and when I actually, in this case, I would need to add my two equations because I can see if I add a 3 and a negative 3, I'll end up with 0, and then I'll cancel out that y. So I would end up having to add 7 fifths x plus 1x. Starting to look ugly. I'm dealing with fractions. Here I can see I would eliminate the y variable. That's nice. But then i got to do 32 fifths plus 20. Yuck. I'm not going to choose that method either. If the numbers are friendly to you in that particular example, go for it. You can use that particular method. But I'm going to show you the method that I, I decided to jump into when I first solved this problem. I thought it just might be nice if I multiply, if I um, take this equation and multiply both sides by 5. That, to me, gave me friendly numbers to work with. And so if I rewrite this one over here, this stays the same. But when I rewrite this one, I'm going to end up with nice whole numbers that are easier to work with that hopefully will prevent me from making mistakes. And now I see I have a positive 15 and negative 15, which means all I need to do is just add these two. And when I do, I have 12x. This is going to end up being 0, so I'm not even going to write it. And this is going to equal 132. And then I will have, if I divide both sides by 12, I will end up with x equals 132 over 12. And I 